Hello everyone, this is Daniel and welcome back to another part in this modeling series. So uh, today we'll finish off modeling, um, we'll skip the cape for now um, and begin to do UV mapping. So I just want to quickly fix a couple of things that I thought a little bit about. Uh, I figured out one way how we could possibly improve the situation that we have here. And I want to show you quickly how I would approach that now. Uh, so basically I'll begin by deleting this section here and my idea is that we basically want to um, can we actually do this yeah that will work fine uh, so I'm going to merge these two points first um, just M merge at center and then I want to merge these here and that's that just will leave us with even less points um, and make the whole grid fill um, less of an less of an issue. There we go. Well, we could have just <laughs> connected this really. All right. So. Um, And you know, if you still wanted to remove more, we could even go with do that a bit more often. But for now, that looks alright. Uh, I quickly want to make sure that this is all uh, snapped nicely to our high-resolution mesh, and I'll also smoothen it a bit. So we'll use a shrink wrap modifier. Uh, set up a. Why do we have shape keys here? <laughs> uh, yeah, we don't need that. Let's delete this for now. Um, let's create a new vertex group, I'll assign this part to it and select it here and for the target we'll take of course the high resolution version of the helmet and now all I need to do is to just take the usual brush and smooth it out a little bit. I'll try not to touch the the ring that sort of surrounds it. I only want to, okay well I did touch it now, <laughs> I only want to get these inner points uh, smoothed out. There we go. So that just reduced the amount of uh, additional vertices here in the middle a little bit. Um, not entirely sure if that's really cleaner or not, but that's what I'm going to do here. Also, uh, furthermore, um, I thought about this and my thought was that we'll have to paint um, the outline onto the mesh below either way because the way you know it's set up even if we have the outer secondary hull around it um, you will still see the mesh below it so it will require a texture around it and that means that we can get the nice rounded shape back in texture and we don't need to worry about it too much here so what I want to do here is just delete all of these um, sort of secondary subdivisions that we won't be needing anymore So all of these loops go and we should be left with a much more simpler geometry. And with all these optimizations done, I think that the overall, you know, density of everything looks very good and even and um, should be good to go. So uh, next step is going to be um, UV mapping in preparation of texturing and I thought a little bit more now about the face and what I want to do with it um, by the way I think it's kind of funny that it's still kind of the part with the least detail at the moment I think I just want to quickly check um, if there's really nothing we can do to improve the situation here so let's take these two objects isolate them quickly and feel like the least I can do is add something around here and maybe even one around here let's add even more maybe <laughs> alright I'm just adding a few random loops um, we'll select everything up from here uh, and do similar to before uh, a new vertex group for these 
these points um, and we will use a shrink wrap project it onto this mesh but only where the group is so we don't affect any of the nicely done parts here and only the head and once again we need to smooth out the new geometry so that it doesn't yeah create any issues it does create a little bit of a mm, too too much detail here in the top but I feel like for the bottom here we kind of need it so that we don't get any overly smooth uh, overly low resolution silhouette I mean I don't really like to see any of these hard edges around so just smoothing things out here and I think it goes is going pretty well so far um, we still might have a little bit of an uneven distribution but it's really smooth smooth and hard to notice so it's not all that bad center line is always a bit difficult because the tool doesn't really support you well in that in that particular spot all right but I think um, that looks now a tiny bit better should help us in the future too when we when we do the face yeah but I was actually talking about the face now before I forget to finish what I was going to say um, there are two options I am thinking about. We could either do the face uh, features as sort of a separate geometry that we kind of project onto the face, which we could then animate with shape keys or just normal rig setup, uh, which would um, give us lots of uh, smooth transitions, um, since you can interpolate between those shape keys. Or we could take an approach where we create like a, a texture that is projected onto it. In which case you have again complete creative freedom, you can make any shape you want. But um, animations would be a bit difficult since you can only really switch between images and not... Um, yeah, I think you know what I mean. Not really interpolate between them. So I'm a little bit split between those two uh, options at the moment, um, but both of them don't require uh, this mesh itself to have its separate texture. If I would do this with a texture, I would probably just make a copy of, um, of the geometry of this section and do this as a separate, se sort of semi-transparent layer on top, instead of... Um, because the face is kind of rigid by itself, it doesn't deform, uh, at least in what I'm planning, so it just shouldn't be an issue. And if we decide to go for the mesh version, well, the mesh on the other hand shouldn't really be needing any normal maps in that particular case, so we won't need to include it in our current setup. So, so basically we're good to move forward and just ignore the face for the time being do our normal maps, do textures for everything else and uh, probably the, the face will be the very last step which we kind of put on <laughs> at the very end. Alright, so so now that we've fixed the situation here, let's uh, apply shrink wrap. Let's make sure that the center line is all merged. That looks good. We can hide this again and back to this view. Uh, let me just move these a tiny bit up just to make this curve smooth again. Alright and here we go I feel like that's a lot better it now matches the density of the the density better to the surrounding areas and the silhouette is now a tiny bit smoother. Well we can't really help help this here that's just going to be uh, the quality of our mesh. So anything from this distance or so should look perfectly smooth without any issues. And well, basically you'd probably have, if, if this was in-game, you could have level of details and reduce it further for cases when you look from a distance. 
but that is all out of out of the scope of this tutorial so let's stick to the basics so uh, we're ready to move on to our next big step that is actually a big milestone here modeling is all done the cape will be something we'll look at completely separate it will have its own texture its own setup its own shading and everything so I will exclude it for now and move on without it uh, as for everything else here um, I've been kind of having a different uh, debate uh, in the meantime I personally love to use substance painter for all of this but um, in this video I want to do everything in blender <laughs> and that is going to make things a little bit tricky Wait, let's not touch that since it's mirrored on the other side um, how can we fix that this will work yeah so I want to do everything in blender but the tools in blender aren't great um, but we'll still do it here it will just be um, yeah not the greatest <laughs> and I'm a bit worried that um, yeah I just have the experience that uh, blenders baking tools give you many artifacts and such um, so yeah as for the baking I'm still not entirely sure what we'll do but for now we just need to do the UV mapping and we'll think about that I don't know in between the videos and I'll give you give you a solution <laughs> so uh, to begin UV mapping I'll click here on this separation line between the, the areas right click that and do a vertical split I'm just going to put here a se separate window and set this to the UV editor now any object that I take into edit mode and anything that I have selected will come up here and you can see that all the UVs are currently a mess basically or not existing uh, and whatever so now we need to do one part after another and we should do all final um, fixes of geometry before we move on <laughs> just a little and because it will be will just m give you distortions if you try to do things later um, so better not to, to to touch the mesh after you start UV mapping um, let me just push these down a tiny bit I think you you can see what I'm trying to do um, It's a bit difficult to do this by hand um, since you'll always be a tiny bit off but I'll do my best here to just get it as smooth as I can as I possibly can. Um, we could also apply this quickly and do it with the tool. I mean sure let's go ahead and do that that will make it perfect and then we just need to delete half of it again and add the mirror modifier back then finally just make sure that all the center points are properly clipping and with that we should be done with our little corrections here okay then um, to get started we need to think about how we want to lay things out uh, do we want to go for a UDIM workflow bake multiple sheets of textures uh, or do we put everything on one thing and quite honestly this is again another situation where I'm limited a little bit by uh, Blender's baking tools and such because personally I would like to do separate sheets maybe do one for the body one for the for the upper body one for the lower body and maybe one for the uh, accessories and I don't know something like that but um, I'm at the moment not entirely sure if uh, blenders tools support that sort of workflow well enough so um, and also because uh, yeah it's just going to be easier to handle I think what we'll do is to just stick with one texture sheet so we'll do one texture and put on it well all the information we need um, 
which will work out for sure for this particular character, but something more complicated, um, yeah, I would definitely suggest to look into a Udim workflow with Substance Painter or something like that. It's a lot easier, quicker, more more non-destructive. It's easy to go back with these things and make corrections. All right, so um, I've just saved the file as a separate uh, as a new file. Um, and so I don't have to be too worried about destroying things because I will be applying now a bunch of modifiers. Although, uh, should we work in symmetry? <laughs> uh, we could save a lot of texture space if we, for example, I mean these parts are the same, right? So we could stack them on top of each other and get sort of twice the performance out of texture. But then, on the other hand, these two things will need to be the same, so we can't do it for uh, the unsymmetrical parts. Uh, so yeah, I think we're going to try to keep things uh, stacked for symmetrical parts, uh, which will work out well for most things, and only the asymmetrical things will go, um, yeah, for all the way. So um, let's begin. Um, the first step that we need to do is to mark our seams and to just make it so that the auto unwrapping just gets us, you know, a good amount of the way done. Um, so I'll begin with some part that I find here. <laughs> um, let me quickly check something. Okay. So this is the first part I want I will begin with because it's quite easy and straightforward. And you need to think about in your in your head how can you unwrap this? If this was like a 3D model made out of paper, where do you need to make cuts so that this can be flattened out? Um, and you usually want to do this on edges like this. So I'm going to mark a seam here, control E to mark a seam uh, from the menu. I'm just going to separate these two off. So if I w were to now hit the U key and unwrap this, you'd see that these two pop off, but here we still have a bit of an issue because it's a cylinder and you need to make a cut somewhere along the cylinder to, um, to make it basically open up. So I'm going to take this edge here on the inner side because it's less visible and just mark it as a seam. Now if you unwrap it, you should get a nice sheet and two caps. And that's just fine, we'll just put it up here somewhere, uh, you'll see later why we're doing it this way. Um, and we'll move on to the next part. Uh, so this is done, let's move on to this one. Again we have the mirror modifier on, uh, now let's see what we can do here. We could cut it here this time, mark a seam here, and I'll take, well we also do the same for this side, mark a seam here, and we'll have to do this all around. And then I'll take again the shortest inner, innermost edge because this is the least visible spot, um, and we'll do another cut, and this should fold up nicely, there is not nothing too distorted. Uh, actually, I think there is a way to check if, like, how bad it is um, in your uh, display settings, I believe. UV editing, display stretch, angle and area. There are two options. You can use these to analyze how bad the situation is. And area-wise, this seems to be, at the moment, um, the spot that has sort of they stretch the most and in fact it is it has gotten quite small so and it's a bit of an important spot so we could uh, if you want to go that far uh, you know that also here there will be a met uh, the, the material will be changed let me actually quickly look at the reference that I have yeah so we could try to mark this here off and set and unwrap it again and you'll see that now it has less stretch on it um, but you need to find a balance. I mean, you can't, you can never completely get rid of all stretch um, unless you split like every single face into its <laughs> own UV, but that doesn't make a lot of sense. So, uh, yeah, just try to find a balance between all of this. So now let's move on to the fingers. Again, we have mirror modifier on. 
And for the fingers, um, they'll be all very similar. In fact, it would be nice if we could stack them. Um, especially since we have a little bit of an issue here where they intersect and that's going to be trouble when, we, when it got, comes to baking. So I'll try to do all the fingers in one and the thumb separate because that's a different, different mesh. Which means that um, we need to think about how we split it up. And I would say we go like this. I mean, it's basically a box. Think about how you would open, uh, cut open a box and at the least visible spots if possible. And I believe that a good way would be to cut through here, then over here, and then in the back um, we'll go maybe here. And unfortunately we have to do this now for all of these parts, but before we spend the time, let's just um, test it. I'll hit L to s select this entire part, you unwrap and see how it performs. And I think that that looks pretty nice, we'll have to straighten things out of course, but um, there doesn't seem to be any major issue with the layout itself. So now let's go and do mass production on this. <laughs> We'll just use our selection tools smartly to get all the edges selected that we need. I hope I didn't make a mistake there. Then we'll take the same edge on the bottom as we did on all sides. Bit tricky to select it down here. Um, then it should be this one up to here and then this one up to here. And finally, in the back, we need to go from... We can actually select the entire loop and then deselect the topmost edges. That should be it. Uh, let's mark the seams, select all four, unwrap them all, and let's see if they're all looking roughly the same. So they look good. Um, no issue. We'll be able to stack them later nicely and just, yeah make them identical basically um, and then we just go for the last last finger quickly once again around here over to here and then without these two edges mark seam select everything now unwrap and that is basically once again the same just that it's turned upside down. So there we go, I'll move it out somewhere to a space where we haven't put anything. Imagine there is your other part. Actually we didn't do it with the previous one. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Honestly we'll do that later anyway. But I just like to keep them separate so that when we are done we can clearly, we can select them all and clearly uh, see like the different, different areas that we unwrapped. So uh, here we go, next one. Um, another challenge. It's almost like a puzzle little game. <laughs> One part of the another and you level up. <laughs> so here again we will have to find a spot where we can cut the cylinder open. Um, and we have a little bit of a step here which will introduce deformation. So you can also think a bit about what we want to do here. But I think I would just want to straighten it out. So I'll go from here to here in the spot where the arm joins into it so that it's less visible. Um, I hope at least that <laughs> that's less visible, but whatever. Probably it will be fine. Then we'll cut here and here, and we'll get a result like this. Let's move it away, and we'll move on to the next part. Oh, okay, this is now the body. So, sure, why not? Let's go and move on to the body. The stacking stuff and straightening of UVs uh, we'll do, by, by the way, in the next part. I still want to do a little bit of research. Um, to see if I can find any useful tools, um, but yeah. We have here a little bit of a um, help this time, because basically when we... also I really don't like what's happening here. <laughs> Let's fix that before we do UVs. Uh, I don't like how there is an intersection already of the mesh with itself. Um, so I'm just trying to resolve this without changing sort of the shape of it. So I'm just using sliding, edge slide tools um, to sort of give it a bit more room. Uh, 
and that looks better. I have to shift these a bit around, try to get this curve nice and smooth. Do the same for this curve. I believe we're still within sort of in the tolerances of the UV uh, of the baking process, so we shouldn't have any baking issues from this. And we're mirroring it, so that looks all good. There we go. Uh, for some reason, I didn't notice that until now, but glad we did now, so that we could solve it. All right. Uh, so the help that we get here this time around is that while we do retopology, we had to introduce these uh, poles, as they're called, like points where there's five things or more connected, or three, like everything where it's not four. And we basically want to use these spots mostly to um, create our seams. So, for example, um, we'll have to do something here, so we could just cut around this area. Um, similarly, I'll cut around here. I mean, think of it as like a t-shirt, basically, and where you would cut a t-shirt. Um, we'll also make a seam here on the inner side of the arm, because that's the least visible spot. Um, this is kind of a bit far to the front, but it's okay. And we also add, will add a cut up here, which will be this one. Uh, just like a t-shirt, there's a front piece, a back plate, and then a cylinder that makes up the arm, and this is sort of open up. I'll also uh, separate these two parts so that we can easily have a sharp edge between the textures by just uh, moving these two parts to separate uh, UV island. Okay, let's not get carried away here. <laughs> then I'll... Um, of would like to separate it here even though it is getting a bit far off and getting a bit stretched as a result. Uh, let's just fix very quickly this area here. Just want to move these a little bit down and this a bit up. I'm seeing something I don't like here. What is this? <laughs> Where did this come from? Let's just check if there's any other points. Invert uh, and there's nothing else, okay. So that was just a, a single case. <laughs> I, I remember when I started out 3D modeling, these sort of mistakes happened way more often, so uh, yeah, they, they might happen to you too. Um, just try to check your own work as much as you can, and clean up your scene whenever possible. So then for the head, um, Another tricky situation, I don't like to cut anywhere on the face, although um, we only will use this particular UV set for normal, so it's not that bad. It's not like we'll use this for the face texture. So for that reason, maybe we'll just unwrap it as if it was a cube. So, um, But it's only half a cube, so uh, what does it mean? Um, I think I'll make a cut here and here, then here in the back, down here, over here, and we'll just try this quickly and see what we get. Um, so I don't like how this is really opening up here. I think we'll do a different approach after all. What we, there, I mean, there's several things we could try. Um, another thing I wanted to try is if we make a section like this, we won't get any seams on the face. So, but then on the other hand, it's, you know, almost a half circle, so it's going to get a lot of stretching uh, instead. Um, so we have to see if that is acceptable or not. Um, one thing we could try is to just move our seam a bit more to the front in an attempt to sort of decrease the amount of stretching, and I feel like that's getting a bit better could take a look at that and it looks quite reasonable. Uh, which part is that? Also, yeah, the angles should be fine. Um, so this is, like, if you select uh, this option, by the way, you can actually see also which um, 
parts you have selected. So this is this here, that's that of course. It's the face. So what's this again? This is the arm. Front back. Oh, it's a shoulder. Okay. So the so shoulder seems to be quite difficult to unwrap as is. That's the neck. Um, the neck should be fine. So I, th I feel like the shoulder is one last part where it it is a bit too much deformed for it to just work but at the same time I think we should leave it because um, the arm might as well be stretched upwards so uh, I'll try to, to treat it like a cylinder we'll straighten all of these out uh, as we go and um, yeah get rid of all these artifacts so that's okay as it is uh, with that, the UVs, or at least the seams for the body are done, I'll move that away and we'll hide it and move on to the next section. Let's see, how are we doing on time? 30 minutes! <laughs> um, can we finish in one part? I feel like we can't do it all in one part, but should we do at least a little bit more? Could do some simple ones, like this one here should be quite easy. Basically I'm just going to split it up in the middle. <laughs> that should be good enough, really. Um, yep. That will work out. Uh, let's hide it. I mean, we can move this away quickly and then we'll hide it. Um, then we have some other simple parts like this one. Basically for, he for here we'll... Um, Make a cut here, that will make things easier. And then one at the bottom. Let's just select this at the bottom at once on both sides and make a second cut over here. So that will make it already very straight from the beginning. Uh, a little bit of stretching there, but that's totally acceptable. And that part is done as well. And then we'll take the center one. This is probably going to be even easier. All we need to do is to select seam in an invisible area like in the back here uh, once again clean clean solution um, hide it uh, then let's take a look at this part quickly do we really want to mirror it <laughs> I think I think for this part we'll apply the mirror and do it as, as one piece I don't like the idea of having a seam in the middle um, so I will isolate it quickly, I'll separate the front and the back and then if this was just one long loop it would be a bit too long in my opinion. So I'm going to separate it here and here and leave this maybe attached to the bottom so that um, actually it would be better if we attach it to the top so instead let's do our seam down here. Just put the seam into a slightly more or less, uh, slightly less visible spot. And there we go. Um, that's that part unwrapped and done. Uh, these parts I want to do together, as in, yeah, they share sort of the same UVs. So we'll only do, mm, although we'll do both. Let's just select them both at once. Um, I think I'll do a similar approach here, like before, we'll just cut them up in the middle. Uh, except a little bit of stretch in the center, but it's honestly not going to be too bad. Especially with these kind of smaller parts, it's uh, hopefully not going to be much of an issue. Um, wow, we are really speedrunning UV setups. <laughs> so here we have an, a bit of a tricky one again. It would be nice if we kind of um, do, do we accept stretching here? There are various approaches we could take. Uh, I think I'll start by cutting it here. Control E mark seam. And if I'm correct, this is just, yeah, it's just a cylinder. Then we could just take this, or actually maybe let's take the back one here and cut it up here. And that will give us something like this. Um, and later in the editing I think we'll go in and straighten all of these out 
which will mean that we get a bit of texture stretching here, but um, at least it's going to be all straight and easy to texture. Hit that too. For this part, um, where do we need to cut? Probably it's going to be best if we make um, three. Hmm. Yeah, let's make three sections out of it. I'll cut here, here, and down here. Um, yep. Then we'll go um, around here, let's say. Although it, that would make it a bit visible. Maybe we should go around here to try to hide it a little bit better. But then we get a bit of stretching here. Well, let's try. Uh, we'll mark the seam. Uh, mark the seam here, and um, add a relief point only for the inner part. Mark seam. So that means that we get two rings, and kind of this ends up. Oh, that was just because here we still have it connected. Uh, try it again. Now we get one long piece and two rings, and it didn't do as bad as I thought it would, so maybe we'll just leave this part attached and it gets its texture information from there. Um, yep, so that's done again. Um, hide that part. What about the ears? Ears seem quite easy again. Probably we can just split them in half, like so and unwrap them, there we go. <laughs> then we'll do the hair, that should be probably really easy, I have a feeling that it won't even need a single <laughs> single uh, edge, we'll just leave everything connected as it is. I'm a bit sorry that this is a bit low quality, but <laughs> in the worst case we'll go and edit it a little bit later. So these are done, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And I thought we won't make it in one part. <laughs> uh, all of these could almost work, but it does get a lot of a lot of stretching towards the outer parts. But I also don't feel like separating it. Um, we'll be stacking all of these, and yeah, we should we should split it um, just to make sure we don't waste any of our precious resources. Um, or maybe we just don't and just make the quality there go bad in the back because you don't really see that anyway. It's just going to be a plain color as well. Um, and maybe we could just give it a, a dark border as well. I don't know, that's going to be fine actually. So this we'll just leave as is. Um, hide that. Let's move on to this part. Um, We'll cut it in the back. Actually, no. We'll, we'll cut it once here, then here. So the top and the bottom should be uh, should be dealt with. And then I think we'll be fine if we just make a cut through like this. And unwrap, and that looks good. Um, move it out of, out of the way. Um, All right. Well, we need to unhide everything now, it seems. So which parts do we do already? This is done, this is done. All of this is done. This is done. Done, done, done. And this was done as well. This is done too. Here we're done. Uh, so, it's going to be a long video. Let's, let's finish though what we have started. Maybe we'll leave one of the complex, more difficult part for the end if it turns out to be too much, but uh, maybe we'll just finish on time. Um, here I'll begin by separating the sort of the floor of that, and we'll also do something similar here for the top. I'll go a bit wide so that this part can have less stretching, although it still has a bit of a tricky spot here in the front. I'll then cut the back, like so, and just test it for a second. 
and um, I'm just wondering like what would happen if we gave it a bit of a relief spot like so it doesn't really change does it so let's just leave it together it would be a bit of a weird shape to deal with but hmm we can't really straighten it out either well it's okay it's just going to be a bit of a weird shape to deal with so let's hide this move on to the, to the next part uh, here we'll once again separate the top like so um, we'll also separate around here mm, should we do the cut in the inner side or in the back I think I'll move the cut to the back just to keep things consistent as usual although I think the legs are going to be in the inside well anyways uh, that should shouldn't be a big of an issue um, then I'll cut off this inner part and we'll just continue uh, this line here to there and that should look all right um, is that a bit too much different I mean it's the inside so it's not going to be visible very much we could just as well do a second cut here and just be a bit on the safe side yeah let's just do that um, then we're done with this part too. Now we have two more parts to go. Here are the, the pants and here's the helmet, which are a bit of a tricky, trickier ones. <laughs> so how about you, you try to do those maybe? I'll stop the video here for now and we'll take a look at these in the next video. Shouldn't take long, but... Um, I'll also go and research a little bit about the some of the tools that I might want to use for the sort of um, cleanup stage of this. We need to do this out in all in one layout, one unified layout, so uh, I'll see what I can find there. And otherwise, um, yeah, I'll see you again soon. <laughs> Next time we'll probably be done with the UVs. Alright, thank you as always for watching. And I will see you next time.